Hello there, welcome along. It is Business Connections Live. Great to have your company as always. Steve Harlan with you here. And boy, have we got a cracking show lined up for you tonight. Programme 69 is what we're talking about this evening. And my guest tonight is Josh Piers of My PT Plan. Now, if you were 18 years old and you were thinking to yourself, what shall I do? Shall I go to university? Shall I go off there? Shall I go into full-time education? Or shall I be an entrepreneur? It actually sounds very attractive when you say it like that. Shall I go to university? Shall I be an entrepreneur? Nah, I don't want to be an entrepreneur. I'll go to university. Or you could be an entrepreneur and you could actually start doing things. It was a big awakening for him. He was 18 years old and decided to do something that was not the norm. Bit of a risk. Find out what his parents thought, why he did it, what the problems were that he had. As I said, my guest tonight is Josh Piers of my P... It's not easy to say, is it? My PT Plan. Uh, great to have you with us, Josh. You Thank you very it. much. Thank now, you. we met for the first time at the business show. A we few, did. And it was this great meeting. It was a, kind of an inspirational story to all intents and purposes. Thank you. You know, you're a young man. How old are you? I'm 20 years old. 20 years old. And how many businesses are under your belt at the moment? Uh, three businesses currently under my belt, um, age of 20. So, yeah, keep, keeps me busy. It's not bad. Is it? No, it's, it's uh, hard work, but very enjoyable. And uh, it's, it, it's one of them where you, the hard work definitely does pay off. Now, let's, let's talk about where you are right now. We're, we're going to talk in detail about where you are right now. Yeah. But just the top line, the business you're running at the moment, the, the core, there are a couple of core businesses, yes, aren't there? Correct, there are. There's uh, two fitness businesses I'm currently co-director of, um, co-owner of and director. Um, is my PT plan, which you introduced me with, with and Evo Nutrition. Uh, which supports the supplementation brands for the fitness market. Which, which is an interesting area. I mean, what experience do you have when it comes to, to both those brands? I mean, the PT one, yep. kicking off. You're a healthy looking young man. Obviously, you, you, you f frequent the gym quite regularly, I would imagine. Yep. Two, three times a week. You <laughs> times two. <laughs> like, not unlike myself, actually. And uh, so, so, you know, tell us a little bit about the background and why those businesses? Um, well, I've got a background to sales and marketing. Um, I started a original business, which was the UK Fuel Save, which we'll talk about later on. Um, and that gave me a real hunger and drive to want to do more things. Uh, I built a company to have staff up and down the UK, um, to have a decent turnover, to be able to uh, sales support there. Uh, sales um, was done in August. And last January, I started my PT plan. And the story was really simple. There wasn't any, uh, my PT plan offers the nutrition and fitness plans for people who go to the gym. And apart from the general steroid-based 1980s male-dominated market, there really wasn't anything which fitted that person who wasn't really too sure on what to do or was reached the goal and wanted to knock on a bit further but just didn't know how or was bored of a routine. Um, so myself and a business partner, Tom Melody, um, Tom is the personal trainer and Tom comes up with all the plans and with all the expertise behind the fitness and nutrition. Um, and I obviously did the marketing side. So it was a perfect opportunity for us both to create a business and go forward, which we've already done across the last 12 months. I mean, it's, it seems... I mean, it, it's a fascinating, the fact that you've done it and it's been so successful in, short, in such a short period of time as well, for that matter, just goes to show that the marketing expertise is coming in. To, to do that, do you think anybody could do what you've achieved there? Was it, or was it the, fa the fact that you found um, a niche in the market, that you luckily found a niche in the market, that you identified, that you went after? Or do you think you can take any market sector and find the niche in it and actually build a successful business? I think any business can be successful. It, um, it's, it's down to the main philosophy of the people who are running the business. Um, I must say my PT plan is a very niche market. Of course, we're looking for people who have got specific goals and specific targets to be able to work with them and go forward. Um, but I think anyone can run a business. Uh, you've got to be determinate, determination is the key thing. And you've got to know your figures and you've got to be able to just to, just to work out a good and bad thing but I must say a lot of people are made to be work and a lot of people are made to go into employment and the normal routes of life um, but a lot like myself don't want the traditional route don't want to go to university um, 
And, you know, it wasn't like I didn't have the opportunity to go to university. I was meant to study business and law um, back in 2012. And I really thought to myself, is this what I wanted to do? And I guess it wasn't. And I wanted to follow my dream to be my own boss, to have that life that everyone wishes to have. And thankfully, uh, with the support of everyone around me, I'm being able to do that today. But that is a huge decision, isn't it, at the, yeah. at the age you're at, to to decide at that point that that's what you want to do. I mean, there must be something, a precursor leading up to that. When you, uh, and we're, obviously we're going to get into more detail about the current businesses, but going right back to those years yeah. when when you were in school, yeah. you were quite entrepreneurial there, yeah. weren't you? You were... You were, going, you were using eBay to a certain yeah, extent, correct. you were trading on eBay. Yep. Now, a lot of people hear that there is way, you can make money on eBay. You can, yeah, of course you can. You can, yeah. you can rebuy, you, you can drop ship, you can do all sorts of different things with it. What did you do with eBay? Um, I was known as a bit of a wheeler dealer uh, between the ages of 13 to 15. Um, I was the one in the playgrounds to sort of do that. I was do, selling mobile phones at the time. Um, <laughs> buying and selling, um, buying at a price and selling at a price. So a real simple business model. Um, you buy stock and you sell stock. And That's what I, Peter Jones did though, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly yeah. what he did. 100%. Um, you know, you look at the likes of the big people in business. Alan Sugar started in the market um, buying and selling and look where he is today. I wouldn't want to you know, say I'm the next Alan Sugar. I'm never going to never going to turn around and say that. But the fact is anyone can buy something at X and sell it at Y and the profits is theirs. You know, that, that's simple business. Do, what, what do you think it was? What were the skills, do you think, that allowed that to succeed? For instance, you, you, if you can go onto eBay, actually, you can go on eBay yourself and you'll find there are stories on there on how to make money out of eBay. There are a lot of people who will, who will trade using it and they will buy their stock from eBay and then remarket it or resell it, repackage it, mm -hmm. uh, or they will add something to it. Is, is it to the, the words you use? Is it... Is there a gene inside of you that, that sort of says, look, I may not call myself a salesman, but actually I understand the hot buttons that when somebody's purchasing something, that they're the things I've actually got to use? Yeah, I think um, naturally it's come to me to be able to work out a decent proposition. Um, there's always a business idea going around my head. There's always a way to another look of life. Um, so you know, a perfect example is um, being out with friends. Uh, they all see things very, very normally in day-to-day -day life. And I'll always see, is there a way to make money? Is it financially viable? And people always ask me, what, what are you working out? And I generally say to them, how is this place open? Or how is, how, how is this happening? And where's, where's, where's the finance coming from? And I guess my mind works to that, to that functionality of uh, money's not always the most important thing in life, but I guess I work to that thing of the pound signs come to, my, come to my eyes when I do see a good opportunity, and that's been proven across the last sort of seven, eight years. Do you think you've taken risks? Massively. Um, I mean, the risks, the biggest risk I probably have taken has been the last year. Um, starting the two fitness businesses up from scratch, the fitness, fitness industry is a massive industry, uh, multi billion pound industry in the UK. And to be perfectly honest, I think we've taken risks and we've gone into a niche market, which is an even bigger risk for us. And the success we've had across the last 12 months, look, there's been things we have, we've learned from it. And there's been a lot of times where we've, we've come across and we, we tried to be too big for what we wanted to be at the time. But we've taken that on board, we've learned, we've gone forward and we're making it into more of a successful business. What surprises me is that when I said to you, have you taken risks, the risk the risk that I would imagine that you would have come up with would be the risk between going to university and, and I mean, we've said, you know, entrepreneurial university, but no, the, the difference in that, that, that surely must have been a huge risk to take. For me, it wasn't a big risk. Um, I always knew that I was des not destined to, to do stuff. I, at the time of, um, I started the, my first business in March 2012. Um, and it was 2012 when I was meant to uh, go to university. And obviously with that in mind, for that six month period, I started to make money. And people say money talks. Yeah, money does talk because when you're actually starting to employ people, um, you're starting to have your own business and you're working alongside people in an office environment at the age of 18 whilst you're still at college. You kind of think, well, why do I need to go to university? And uh, I, I do tell a story which many people have heard before. I did turn up at uh, uni on day one, uh, the enrolment day. Um, you know, I turned up, parked my car in the car park. Um, like everyone, you know, we all got dropped off and I parked my car, um, 
got into the back of the back of what I thought was a registration queue. And it was quite funny, really, uh, because everyone in that queue, I looked at and I kind of thought, oh, no, is this where I want to be? And it was a typical um, red brick university, stereotypical kid where he was long ginger hair, glasses. And I sort of said, is this, is this the queue for registration? Is this where I need to sign up to for my course? And he turned around and goes, uh, yeah, no, this is uh, for, for the queue for freshers. I've been here since half five this morning. And it was 11 o'clock in the morning. And as, as he said this, there was a chant of freshers, 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 getting louder and louder down the queue of about 2,000 people. And I thought to myself, is this really the place I want to be for the next three years of my life? Not only three years I could have wasted, but also the financial implications of which I'll be paying for, the, for a good 20 years of my life. And that wasn't something I was ready to commit to when I was already making money and having had a successful business model in place. So what did you do at that point? Did you turn and walk? At that point, I no, I, I actually enrolled. Uh, and I had the weekend to think about it. Um, I went to a, a typical um, grammar school where if you didn't get AAB, you, you were not frowned upon, but it was almost one of them things where you have to go to university for statistics. And for me, uh, I, I was brought up in the line of 11 years in, in, in one place. And it was, you, what university are you going to? Everyone asked that question. We have a, we have a speech night every single year. What university do you go to? And it was mad because, you know, I, I must say, you know, not many people will turn around and go, I didn't go to university. A lot of people say, I want a gap year and then go into study in the future. But not many people would avidly turn around and say, do you know what? I didn't go to university because I wanted to start my own business and I wanted to carry on creating what I already started. You didn't stand up there and go, the university of life. No, um, unfortunately not. <laughs> um, you know, many, many across my age group look at me and kind of think to themselves, well, how, how's he doing it? You know. Um, Oh, he's got this, he's got that. How has he got that? But the main thing is, um, people sometimes think, oh, things are handed to you on a plate. It really isn't that simple. And trust me, you know. Um, has that been levelled at you? Because obviously your parents must have been influential at the time. Of course. No, I, I, you know, there's, there's a couple of people I couldn't have done this without. Um, parents being one, family, the support of my family had been fantastic. Um, even down to the point of me not going to university, because that for them, that for them was probably the risk, as you said before. For them, that was a risk for me not to go because they wanted to see me be successful. You know, they don't want to be there, but they obviously want to be there for you to help and nurture and care for you and support you. But they don't want to see you go through hard times. Um, no parent, you know, would want that for the children, for their children. And I must say, back back a couple, uh, about three years ago, um, it was it was a serious conversation we had. I we, I joined on the Saturday on the registration. I signed up, and I came back, and I was I was. I was gutted, to be honest. I, I came home and I was absolutely gutted. And I sat down with my parents across the weekend. You were demoralised. I was, yeah, I was, I was demoralised. I didn't want to be there. And there's only a couple of times I felt that. And it was it, that's generally been towards study, um, where I, I just, I, it was almost like this little, in a, in, a, in a teenage sulk, you know? And I didn't want to be there. Um, and I, I explained this feeling to my parents. And they, they said, look, we'll support you no matter what. And especially mum. Um, across the last you know, two and a half years, it's been fantastic for me. Um, you know, people say about mentors, I couldn't have asked for a better mentor than mother and father. You know, it's been, it's been awesome uh, to have their support, their guidance. Um, a bit, bit of a background to my family is I've got two brothers, one's 30 and one's 34, um, both self-employed. Both have their own businesses. Uh, one brother's out in Russia, um, you know. So it's one of them where my dad is self-employed and my mum's self-employed. So, ev so the, everyone, the, everyone in the family have their own business. So the ethos within the family is that that kind of get 100%. up and get off the bottom and do it yourself. You know, I've yeah. seen, I've seen, I, I, you know, dad was employed. I'm sure you won't mind me sharing this story until um, 2000. Um, early 2000s, he was made redundant by a, a, a national insurance firm, and I saw the family struggle. Uh, this was between my age group of four and eight. I saw the family really struggle for that four year period where he was too overqualified to get a job and no one wanted him because he was too overqualified. And the thing, it, it seemed mad, you know, he, he was in this job for 25 years. Um, a, a big person and a big mentor for me has been Brad Burton, the director of Four Networking. And he does say to people, you know, you're in your job, you're safe, fantastic, but what happens when you're made redundant? You know, the story at the minute is people are being made redundant. Well, the, the fact is, they've, what have they got to be backed up with? Um, you know, they might have, might have their education or they might have a, a redundancy pot where they think that, that's fantastic. But for me, it's about building a future. It's about building um, a network of businesses to be able to have pots in each in, in, in certain sectors and be able to sort of move forward 
and being successful and showing that true entrepreneur spirit I feel I have. My word. I tell you what, I mean, it's, it's inspiring already, but, you know, that, that whole area of when it comes to be made uh, redundant, it's happened to me twice, actually. Well, twice probably happened to me a few more times than that, depending what part of the industry you're in. I was working in, in the marketing industry and, uh, and in, in the, uh, the course of 18 months was made redundant twice. Mm. If, <laughs> that's careless of me, wasn't it? Uh, but it, it does happen. And, you know, for a moment you are, you're, knocked, you're knocked sideways. Mm. I think the thing that always surprises me, and, and I'll, I'll bring you in on this, is that people look at you and go that if you're self-employed, if you're doing it for yourself, mm -hmm. the question that comes up is they say, well, don't you feel a little bit vulnerable? that you're not getting a regular salary. And the thing is that, you know what, the, honestly, if you're in a full-time job in today's environment, you are probably no more at the very best four weeks away from being got rid of, maybe. Mm. If your name is on the list, you're gone. Your history and it doesn't matter about all the late nights that you put in and all the hours you put in mm. and the dedication, the length of time and the service. You are four weeks away from being got rid of. All the time. Now, when you start looking at full-time employment like that, yes, there are big benefits. You know, go away on holiday and you're still being paid because that's part of your contract. And you get all the private medical uh, care, whatever, with, with the organisations. But the thing you've got to remember is that the only difference between being full-time or self-employed is the fact that you're in control of your own destiny. And if you work hard, you reap the benefits. If you're working for a large multinational or somebody like that, the chances are you could be driving up and down motorways every hour that God sends. You could be working your butt off and at, at the stroke of a pen, your name could be on that list. And you may get a nice fat redundancy check when you're walking out the door. That may be absolutely fantastic. But a lot of the times it's not a year's salary, is it? Maybe six months salary at the very most. You may walk away with a big pot of money. It'll disappear very quickly, particularly if you find yourself in a situation like Josh, his father, who was overqualified. Listen, sounds like I'm getting on a soapbox. I don't mean to, but the thing is that you've got to remember that the vulnerability is only in your mind's eye and it's not in anybody else's. It'll be nobody else's fault but yours. Listen, we'll, we'll come back to Josh in just a moment. It's Josh Spears uh, from my PT plan. There's too many P's in there. And he made the choice between university and entrepreneurship. Which way should he go? I tell you what, he's done very well so far. Uh, let's look back at last week's promo. Well, last week's show, our guest was Michael Nagels of uh, Strouther Marketing Solutions. And we were talking about internet marketing. Fascinating night. Actually, w w when we say internet marketing, there were a few key subjects that we actually covered. Did you realize, and he covers this in just a moment, that one of the things you've got to make absolutely certain of, if you are registering your web domain, I'm going to say this now, and he's going to repeat it in just a moment, but if you are registering your web domain and you think, you know, what, I'm too busy to be doing all this, I'll outsource it to somebody. And that person who is doing all the work for you setting your website up, but they register it in their name and they become the owner of it you could be giving away the keys to the castle and people do that here's a little bit of a reminder about what we talked about last week's edition of business connections live <laughs> My guest tonight is Michael Nagels of Strouther Marketing Solutions. When your company gets really big, yes, when it gets really big, really successful, and you have a rocking operation that mirrors your vision, then you're going to have to have someone down the hallway that's going to do the job of maintaining your website and promoting your business for you through social media and also search engine marketing. Well, internet marketing is, is kind of an umbrella term for a number of different platforms that you can use to promote your business online. Twitter is internet marketing. Facebook is internet marketing. Your website is certainly internet marketing. Um, and all of the supporting elements of your website, such as SEO, search engine marketing, Google AdWords, Bing, all of those encompass internet marketing. The best operations to work with, the best service providers to work with, are, are ones that have a little bit of a mix of both. You, you need some of those nerdy guys who just like sitting at a keyboard and doing code and designing and, and drinking Red Bull 
to, to get the work done, but you also need people that know how to talk, know how to present a product, know how to create selling points, and, and know how to get the message across. The, the, the biggest mistake that everybody makes at some point um, outside the profession is to give up ownership of all of these different elements. Um, the, the thing that we tackle the most at Strother Marketing Solutions is helping people regain ownership of things like domain names and their Twitter account and different elements of social media that they've just lock, stock, and barrel handed over to somebody who came and said, I can do your social media. It's, it's 250 pounds a month, and you give me your Twitter password and your Facebook password and leave it with me because now I have the keys to the kingdom. I registered your domain. What happens if you can't get me on the phone? The simplest way to do it is go to a, uh, there's a website, who.is, so W-H-O dot I-S. If you go to that website, you can put in your domain name, and it will send back what's called the Whois record, which actually says, Steve Hyland owns this website, here's the business address for the website, and and here's where the website is hosted. The domain servers gives the basic information about it. For instance, if you if you register the business, some people don't like to put their names on this stuff because they think it's going to violate their privacy or that they're going to end up on spam list. And there's a risk of that, but remember, this is your business. This is your livelihood. Anyone who emails you a solicitation to do SEO or any kind of work should just be banned. Just don't waste your time with it. If you're willing to sit down and take the time to learn, it's all out there. All of the information is out there. But if you're a double glazing installer, and you're trying to build a business installing doors and windows, do you have time to wade through all that? And not only do you have time to wade through it all, but you also have to figure out whether it's old information, is it inaccurate information, is it information someone put out there who also didn't know what they were doing. Google hasn't really changed what they're looking for since the day they opened their doors. They've always said content is king. Build a website with good content. And they give you some things, some engineering things that you want to do on the back end. But what they've really always ever said is just create good content and help us find stuff that we can connect people to because they're a service provider. What they provide is a search engine. Engineer your website properly, get the code done right, create good content, and then use some of these other methods to promote them. Backlinking is a link from someone else's website to your website. It's meant to be an indicator of credibility. Um, there's a place for backlinks, and backlinks have a place, but it's very hard to get a credible backlink, and the best way to get a credible backlink, again, goes to good content. The most important thing, as I said this evening, is maintain ownership. That's the biggest problem I help people solve. Don't let somebody else own your domain. Don't let somebody else have unlimited or un, um, uncooperative access to your website server, your web hosting service, or anything like that. There are a lot of people that are very skilled at these things, and you do need their help, but you should hold the keys to the kingdom. Um, when it comes to networking, the most important thing to remember is it's part of your, it's part of your job. It's part of your business growth plan. It's part of your marketing. Um, the thing to remember is that when you go to these meetings, they are serious business, but you should also have a lot of fun. Don't join an, an organization that you can't have fun at because it is work, and you want to have fun at work. Uh, build good relationships, do what you say you'll do, and get as involved as you possibly can because the more involved you are, the higher your visibility is going to be. So if you're a part of an organization like 4Networking that offers team roles, join a team role. You don't do it to make 4Networking bigger, you do it to make your business bigger. 4Networking um, offers what they call a foresight opportunity. If you're a member, you can present for 20 minutes at every meeting or, or at a meeting where you're booked in to present um, on your on elements of your business that improve your credibility within 4Networking. It's not meant to be a sales pitch. It's meant to be infor informational or educational. Take advantage of those. It's an opportunity for you to stand up in front of a crowd and present yourself. Michael Hagel's a fantastic bloke. Uh, great advice. If you get an opportunity, do watch the entire show. Uh, program number 68, if my memory serves me right. It was a fantastic night. Uh, he was from Stroud That Marketing Solutions. You're someone down the hall whose job it is to maintain your website, promote your business through social media and search engine optimization. Uh, actually, while we're talking about search engine optimization and marketing, don't forget next week's program, uh, Rath Akbar is going to be joining us. We're going to be looking at the whole world of how you get your first 
WordPress site. Now, it's sort of kind of standing back a little bit from where we were with business. Uh, we talk about a lot of business things, but there are a lot of young entrepreneurs, elderly entrepreneurs, older people, old people like me, who want to get a website up there online and they want to be able to maybe blog or talk or maybe get their business up there to promote their business. But they don't know how to go about doing it. They don't know where to actually start. Now, there are a lot of people out there who are going to be able to help you out, but would it be nice to actually know what you're buying? And on next week's program, we actually take you through the process of getting your initial WordPress website up online. Straightforward, easy. It's going to be a great show. So make certain you tune in next Wednesday night at six o'clock. Uh, my guest tonight is Josh Pierce of My PT Plan. Uh, he was at university, or he was just about to go to university, and he decided, well, look, is this going to be right for me? I'm 18 years old. Do I want to go down the route of being at university? Or do I want to expand and continue with my entrepreneurial spirit that I've already got? He'd already been running a business using eBay as a medium to get out. He was buying and he was selling. And he felt there was maybe more to life than just going to university and doing what they were doing at university. There's nothing wrong with going to university, but he felt there was maybe a real opportunity to go out there and to do something positive for himself. And that's really where we, we kind of left off, isn't it? Where yeah. You decided not to go to university. You had the business that had been running on eBay. Was that still running at the time? No. Um, until the age of about 16, I ran. Not, I wouldn't say so I, you were 16 I, I wouldn't say, run that I, I wouldn't say I ran a business online with eBay, but it was buying, selling. Um, you know, it probably made me £10,000 a year between that, that age group. And, you know, when you're earning that sort of money, and you, it was quite nice, you know. Um, but the I started a business called the UK Fuel Saver, March 2012. Um, I had a product, pair of painting, and was able to sell in the UK uh, commercially. And basically, with that, I uh, built up across two and a half years. Um, had staff up and down the UK. It's we obviously market it through cold calling. Um, and with that in mind, I, I was the I was the deal closer, so to speak. And it went down really well. And what we had was a product which could help people reduce their emissions, as well as save what's 20% of their fuel. Yeah, yeah. Now, come on a second. And You're 18 years old and you've got a product that, that reduces fuel emissions. You didn't come up with that idea, did you? Uh, so what what was it? Was it was it uh, a franchise? Was it something that you got the distribution yeah, rights? Yeah, it, it it, you can set up in a mul multiple ways. There are companies up and down the UK that which use multi-level marketing to promote this. And there's also, must, I, I actually dealt directly with the US supplier to have a... So how did you go about initially starting then? So what did you do? So here you are, you, you decided not to go to university, yep. you're going to start your own business. Yeah, yeah. So what did you do? Did you sit down with a couple of magazines or, or the internet, no, worked your it, way through websites until you found something? Yeah, it, it, was, it was pretty much, actually, um, uh, the business proposition was given to me through a leaflet form uh, for a multi-level multi -level marketing pro opportunity. And I looked at it and weighed up the option. I thought, oh, this isn't for me. Um, but I did some more research into it. Found the supplier uh, directly in the States. Uh, dealt with them. Uh, all via, uh, initially, initial contact was via email. Um, a guy flew over to meet myself. Uh, we, we sat down, talked, uh, and we came up with, I buy it at one price, I sell it at a price. And, and when the guy walked in the door and he saw this young, this young man, young man yeah. sitting there, was he taken back at all, or um, was it by then had you built a, a relationship already? I with think him? I think he through several uh, through several emails we we built a relationship, and it was it was almost one of them where it was they were skeptical, they were really skeptical, and so how can you do this? How can you do that? But they're asking for a price. I met the price, and we moved on. Um, and the fact was, I knew that I I I bought a product. Um, I thought it was a saleable product. And it ended up being that. Yeah, that was a risk. That was a massive risk. And um, yeah, it was a new product to the UK. No one really heard of it. Um, everyone was skeptical when you first tell them. Um, for six months, uh, we we basically were just dealing off and on. We weren't really doing too much. Um, and I did a lot of networking with it. Um, so basically, I, I networked every Wednesday because it was the only day I didn't have lessons in the morning when I was at college. Uh, I went to and one, what were you taking at college? I was taking geography, business, uh, philosophy, and general studies. Always useful. So yeah, it's always <laughs> always useful to have it, always useful to have in the background. Um, but as I say, you know, I, it was the one day I could go and network. I uh, joined a small little networking uh, group in Cheshire, and I turned up and, and one I was sat around a, a circular table with eight people, 
and one lady did um, sort of printing. And I said, oh, can you do, can you do promotional stuff? And we, we talked. But her husband was the financial director for uh, one of the UK's largest courier companies. Um, and I was invited round to the house on a May afternoon. So we started the business in March. And this was three months in, uh, two and a half, three months in. It was the end of May. Um, and we were invi invited me round. And I knocked on this, I no I knocked on this door in, in Nutsford, and, which is a very wealthy part of Cheshire. Um, to be met by uh, uh, an older an older man who, who wasn't aware I was coming, and the lady who uh, asked me to come round uh, ran down and says, "Oh, this is a, this is an opportunity I thought for your business," and he obviously thought, "Who is this? Why why are you here?" Um, <laughs> sort of knocking at the door to a mansion almost, sort of. But not you know, it was one of them where are you are you a salesman? What are you after? And. Um, it ended up, we gave them a trial. We gave them a trial for six months um, to use on three of their vehicles, and they saved 18%. Uh, and they rolled it out through the whole of their Trafford branch. Um, and how big was the fleet then? Their fleet, they, had, they took 18,000 units off us, um, which was a, bit, a big order, so to speak, across the 12-month period. See, that, that's amazing, but I suppose that nearly goes back to... We, we have this conversation on a regular basis on the programme about the power of networking. 100%. How do you go about networking? It's So did you actually buy the leaflets from her in the end? No. No. Uh, no we, I mean, but you spoke in the course. It's the fact yeah. that she networked. And, it, OK, the networking was, was her husband. Mm. But that was the contact. That's what networking's all 100%. about, that recommendation, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, that, that then came, we got one courier company. Then we had another courier company, and that came through word of mouth, because all generally uh, the way courier companies work, the self-employed drivers, and they rent a vehicle off them, or they bring their own vehicle. And one driver went from one company to another company, and sort of said, "Oh, I've got this stuff," and everyone, you know, it was a traditional thing of it's, it's Chinese whispers, and that spread round the second largest courier company in the UK. And we, we ended up with a, a um, contracts of four of the biggest uh, courier companies in the UK, um, range from DHL. To FedEx to DPD, and you know we we were really we were, we were privileged um, to be able to do that. And you know we were talking before about the the uh, em the benefits of being employed. Well, last summer I was able to not work from the twenty seventh of June until the seventh of September because I had a guy had a guaranteed income coming in. And look, that's not me bragging, that's not me boasting, but we built a, a business um, which had guaranteed money coming in every month, um, which we were able to promote still. Um, we still did domestic as well as commercial deals, um, but we had a core business. Uh, we had a team um, for the first 12 months to set up a new business. Um, as I said, there was, there was uh, in the end, we had 23 in total. 23 employees? No, 23 staff which worked with us. Oh, right, so yes. uh, we weren't employed, everyone was self-employed basis. Freelance, yep. Yep, 100%. And it was all commission only. You know, I, I, don't want, I don't want to get out there thinking that we, it, was a, it was a massive company. It was commission only. And trying to find the right people to work with you on that basis, that was hard work. Um, but we managed, to, we managed to find people. A lot of it was done through uh, internet you know, work. A lot of it was done through Skype. It was a massive thing for us, you know, uh, for us to communicate, conference calls, etc. And we built a business like that. And we, well, once we got the contracts, we started dwindling numbers down a bit because we had, um, we, we, were, we were really, um, we, were, we were to our maximum capacity. Um, we could, I couldn't physically myself do so much more. Um, and this, this ran for about 18 months. And we, you know, we built the business, um, grew the business. And then August last year, we looked to, put the, we looked to sell um, the uh, distribution, which I had, the patent. Um, I, I sold the rights for that over to Greece, um, as, as I explained to you at the business mm. show, and that was just going through, and that's successfully gone through now. So, you know, at, at the age of 20, I can say I've sold the business and I still have two more businesses. Um, so what do you think the big lessons were that you learned from starting that? Because yeah. this is very different. This isn't the franchise, what we're talking about, the, the new one. No, yeah. And... I mean, there you had, some would say you had that lucky break where you met yeah. the woman and the woman yeah, that made the introduction. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree. And, and, and you know, you, you still had to close the sale yeah. and you still had to do the sell. Mm -hmm. So we, we understand that and there's, there's, you know, you could have walked in there and have gone, ah, mm. and it could have all fallen to pieces. Yeah. But you were able to convince the guy who obviously didn't know you were coming. Mm -hmm. I mean, was that a difficult sell? 100%. I was 18 years old while still in college and I was selling to the financial director of arguably one of the biggest courier companies in the UK. 
in his spare time on his day off. You know, it's one of them. It, it doesn't look good, does it? No, it doesn't look good. You know, <laughs> the chances are, what are they going to say? No, go away. Um, or words than effect. And the thing was, I almost was, I was that confident about myself as a person and my product. And I think that's the most important thing when you're running a business. If you're confident about yourself, your business, your product, the service you can offer, then that's what sells. People buy you as a person. And I think he bought my desire uh, and my passion for the business and my wantingness to succeed um, over the product. Because I almost said to him, look, just, just try it, just try it. And it might have come across as very desperate as well. But the fact was, <laughs> I was 18, I was still in college. Uh, I was at full-time college. It wasn't like I, I couldn't drop in and drop out. I was there between nine and half past three. And I was trying to grow something which, to be perfectly honest, at my age was a lot more complex than what I should have been able to do. And, you know, we built the business on the back of that one deal, arguably, but still being persistent, half past six start on the uh, half past six breakfast meeting, um, 20 miles away from my house um, at the age of 18 when a lot of other people, you know, don't really want to, don't want to be doing stuff like that. Or even get up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yeah, that, that, that for me was my persistence towards that. Um, what were the big lessons you think you learned from that? Big lessons I learned from, from that was it, was, it was my first business, so there was lots of errors. You know, there was lots of mistakes. Um, but as you say, I bought into a painting, so it was really easy. There was, there was strict guidelines to follow. Uh, I must say, though, in, in starting the other two businesses, my PT plan and Evo Nutrition, they have been the biggest uh, lessons for me because I've started my own business in two niche markets. Um, with that in mind, there's been a lot of obstacles. There's been a lot of... But a very different model, this, isn't 100%. it? Because you've got the, you had a, you were distributing a product that yeah. had already been a tried and tested product, yeah, yeah. be it from stateside. Yeah. You brought it over here to the UK, so you had all the all the issues that you had mm -hmm. there. You've done your networking, and I know you're very heavily involved as well with four networking okay. as well, because you're a big fan of network, and I can see why, because it works. Mm -hmm. If you do it right, it's going to work for you. Yeah. So, but there you've gone from having a product that was, that was made and generated mm -hmm. how did you take the lessons that were learned from that and then transform them over to transform them over to my pt plan um i think the lessons i learned was how to market a product um and what are they do you think fundamentally? i think for mar for marketing it's really hard um you've got to be really clear with your message decipher your market and hit it and effectively you know with with, with when i started the uk fuel saver i was doing stuff like handwritten letters I was doing type letters. I did a multitude of things to thousands of people. And, which uh, ones work, by the way? Which we one, have which, a debate here. Yeah. Handwritten or email or what? Emails sort? don't work. We sent, uh, we sent out, <laughs> we sent out 5,000 emails a week. Emails didn't work. Um, it generally you know, goes into a spam filter, etc. cetera. Um, what, I'll be honest with you, what did work was a recommendation from Brad Burton. It was <laughs> write every single envelope handwritten, but type the, type the letter out, but write the things, uh, write the uh, address labels. And I remember myself and a colleague, um, it was actually, it was only last January, we were trying to generate a new business and we were handwriting envelopes. We did about a thousand and we, we, went to the, we went to the post office, paid, you know, what, I think it was 45p a stamp, and we got a thousand of them. And we sent them all out. And we didn't have a franking machine, didn't have anything like that, just because the fact was we didn't need it, we didn't post, we didn't, we didn't hold stop, we didn't post. Um, but it was quite funny to think that we got five responses from that, and you know that. That's, and that's about. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for a, a traditional mail drop, mm. that's about right, actually. Mm, 100%. Isn't it? I mean, I, I I follow this principle with the marketing for my PT plan and even nutrition. Um, we did a lot of work with Pacific fitness magazines, uh, such as Men's Fitness, Women's Fitness, Health and Fitness, Men's Health, Women's Health. Um, so obviously, fitness-based orientated magazines where they'll have readers who are into fitness or into you know, looking after themselves and wanting to better themselves in the fitness goals. And we did loose inserts. And that was a fantastic way for us to get business. And we got a 4% return on it. Um, you know, we've done probably three and a half million leaflets across the last uh, eight, nine months, um, which myself, we've, we've all got printed. And then myself has taken down to Oxford every month for the last nine months. But that project has worked down to the fact of I think it's the traditional parts of marketing have gone I feel you know people don't no longer it's all it's all done via a computer um, whereas for me we've done paper advertisement just down to the fact of 
it's in a leaflet, it falls out it falls out of the magazine as a leaflet onto your lap. And I must say the Christmas edition of Men's Fitness, we thought, which was the January um the January publication, we thought we would be a massive, massive market for us, and it was. And we absolutely we, we smashed it down to the fact that we were the only leaflet in that magazine. Because everyone else thought to themselves, oh let's go down under the marketing route. As um, in men's fitness and women's fitness, we were the only leaflet in the January publication. So if 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 if, if it wasn't a bigger marketing like lesson for myself that traditional stuff still work, it really does. It's so a four percent return. We're the only leaflet in a, in a, in, a, in a national magazine. How can that better your business? How can that make your business look any bigger and better than what it is? So. I mean, because it's the cost that I would imagine a lot yeah. of people see yeah. as being prohibitive. Yeah, yeah I understand. So you're, you're a comparatively new business, mm -hmm. you're a young business, yeah. so where did the money come from? It was all self-funded, um, so from the sale of my previous business, um, which you know, some might say, oh, you're lucky, you've got, you've got money to pump into stuff. But myself, I'm a business partner, Tom, with everything's been 50-50, there's been no bank loan, there's been no support of banks, and as you know, we discussed before the programme, there is no support from anyone really in terms of startup businesses there's stuff like the growth accelerator the growth fund but they're all match funding schemes where you say uh, the government gives you a grant of a thousand pound you have to match that with your funding and for that for a person who wants to start their own business i mean that's really hard um you know it i, I think that's why people do look at digital advertising facebook twitter mm -hmm. um as discussed last week you know it's so uh, you know uh, in terms of marketing online it, it's, it's it's the biggest marketing scheme you've got at the minute obviously us being what, face, what the social media yeah social media you know you can get out to the most people um but you're looking at the, if you're looking at the four percent that came back from mm. the publications. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you say four percent, they were bu what they were buying. They were buying right. into yeah, the brand. Buying, yeah, buying into the brand, the uh, website click-throughs. Um, and when you say that, that four percent, what what was that in? If you if you don't mind, I mean, you don't have to, but yeah. in in numbers, what were we talking about when it comes to the kind of traffic we were generating? You were talking thousands of people visiting websites. So, you know, you're talking about a mass quantity across a short space of time visiting your site. And people, I mean, you know, you asked me about marketing. I mean, you've got to have a product to market. And, and when they get to your website, yeah. in fact, we, we can look at the website here, in fact. This is, so this is, this is the website that we're, that we're talking about. There we go. Uh, my PT plan. Mm -hmm. um, Fitter, leaner, smarter. And you can see there's some, I mean, it's a very, very evocative, and it's a, it's a it's actually a very good looking website to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But this is what's interesting here. Was th was this the conscious effort that you said earlier on? So a lot of the time it would be plans for men, you know, flat yeah, the stomach and all the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. But really what you're doing here is that there's one for men and of one course- One for men and one for women. It, it's, it's all that call to actions, you know? Um, on, the, on that page there, we've got plans for men, plans for women. We've got some blogs, a bit of information about ourselves for SEO purposes and, you know, sort of, the, so Google recognises as a business. Another call to action at the bottom for the newsletter for people to get top tips. And obviously then you've got Twitter, um, Twitter feeds, so it looks like we're, you know, we're not just a company who just sits online with no social media support. Um, you know, so at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's a website which enables people to have a lot of call to actions. Um, there are several sort of places people to look at. Uh, there's lots of information, blogs. Um, and it's, it's a website, it's, it's not only a website, it's a community we're trying to build for people. Well, let's have um, a look at this one here where we've got plans for men, men's bespoke online fitness training. We'll look at the ladies in just a moment. So it's obviously you were advised on this because you can't be a web design expert as well. Yeah. When it comes to the, the kind of design, the lessons that yeah, you've learned yeah. from this, what are the things that you feel are important to have on a web page? Here we are, you've got for only six ninety nine a month, you get all of this. Yeah. Your it's, it's bespoke the big exercise and the nutrition plan, access to videos and articles with new releases every month. Your questions answered in a weekly online Q&A and discounts on leading fitness brands. What are you waiting for? I mean, it's, it really is. It's, it's quite journalistic in the way it's been approached, isn't 100%, it? 100%, you know. Is that what's important, do you think, when people... Do people make the mistake of having websites when you go there and there's nothing to do? Yeah, I think people make, a, make the choice about having a static site or an e-commerce site, you know. Uh, we've got an e-commerce site down to the fact that we, we are selling a service. Um, a static site, people... People don't update as much. You know, we have to keep. It's like a shop window for us. Um, we don't have. We don't. You know, we're not. Uh, we don't have a, a shop in a town. 
Um, we're an online-based business. We've, it's like, you know, you don't find the, your local department store with the same Christmas window 12 months of the year. You know, we've got to constantly change stuff. We've got to constantly be doing stuff. So how often would you update this then? The website's updated every three weeks. Um, blogs are daily. Um, it's generally, you know, in terms of a blog, there's a new one going out every couple of days. Um, there's a plan for women. Yeah. If, if you're a young lady and you're watching this, looking for a fitness plan that helps you stay in shape, boosts your energy and makes you feel good. And there's all the information you get. Exercise nutrition plan, yeah. videos, quick Q&A and leading fitness brands discounts on those as well. And all for, I feel like I'm, I'm selling it now, but six nine nine. Let's look at the blogs. That's just because blogs are very important. A lot of people are talking about yeah. blogs. I mean, as you as you see on there, there's there's um, there's there's kind of things about uh, supplement providers, uh, Evo Nutrition, um, another, another one of the businesses, and you know you've got you've got inspirational sort of stories about supplements that you might need to shape up. Um, you know, do you know a lot about your? There's a one in there about insulin. There's there's loads on our site. That people might not actually realise. But you, you, you said to me that you don't claim to be a, an expert. I mean, as you said, you go to the gym. Yeah, so no. Uh, where I does mean, this informa the, where, the information? Who writes the blog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, Tom, Tom. That's Tom's side of the business. You know, and Tom, that's what he does. That's what he does. You know, I'm, I'm there to sort of manage the daily, day, day to day things in the marketing and the promotion of the business. Um, but that's why it's so fantastic. Where there's two of us, the the, the everything's split. You know, um, he's got to do the plans. Um, so you know, Tom, uh, highest certification of PT you can have. Um, you know, th th I mean, the stuff that he comes out with, which I do, I even it cops max me half the time. Um, it's very impressive. The site looks great. Thank you. I feel you, you nearly feel it's like something that you want to go back to uh, to look at again for the simple reason that it's it's nearly like the glossy publications that you're advertising it in. Mm -hmm. And whether that's a conscious effort or not, I'm sure it is conscious. Uh, that really works. Now, that's become a successful business in how long? That's taken 12 months. Um, you know, but people say to you, in the first year of business, if you break even, you've done well. You know, that's rubbish. <laughs> it really is rubbish, because it, the fact is, if you, if you set yourself a, really, a, a minimalistic goal, where are you going to get? You know, if, if, so if we start saying to people, well, let's just get one person a day and let's make a business grow naturally, you know. Um, there's, for me, there's not, you know, you're okay, that might make you a tiny bit of money here and there, but it's not got the snowball effect. It's not got that grabbing, aspirational feel that both myself and Tom portray. Um, and that's certainly not me, you know. I'm, I'm very hungry. I'm very, I'm wanting success and you know, that, that can be shown through the three businesses, that, you know, the two businesses I currently have and the one I sold. Um, so yeah, that's. Yeah, All right, so you're not breaking even, you're making profit then? 100%, you know, that, that's the, the, the end of the business across the year. It was, so what was your target then in year one? I don't, I don't want to go into finance, you know, I don't, I don't no, want to start don't, breaking into stuff. But, 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 but statistically? Statistically right? was to break the thousand mark on subscribers and you know, we, we've been there. Job so, done. Exactly. Fantastic. Um, and, and that's really what this is about. It's, it's, it's making those targets, isn't it? 100%. I think, I think businesses, um, I mean, I've got, I've got a business coach and mentor, Debbie Huxton, who many, many people know through for networking. Yep. And she's been fantastic for me to actually just be realistic. You've got to set goals and don't write a to-do list. Set a goal which you have to realistically achieve because, you know, any, any business can say, I want to turn over a million pound. But Okay, you made you made a statement. How are you going to get there? Where's your plan? You, you know, it, everyone goes on at the six P's, you know, and it's true. You've got to give a plan. us the six P's for those people that have never heard them. I'm not going to say them live, <laughs> but you know, it, you know, it's it's the performance performance is related. This, is stuff. this all to do with performance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> you know, pe people people say to me constantly, "Do you plan? Do you prepare? Do you do stuff?" And you know. You've got to as a business. You've got to know where you're going in six months' time. You've got to know where you're going in a year's time. You've got to have, you know, we've got a target. We work very closely um, with the US goalkeeper, Tim Howard, and we've got a target for our third year of business to be able to launch my PT plan in the States. With, you know, we've got, uh, on our marketing currently, we have the USA goalkeeper, um, who we, uh, Tom, has personally trained. And he's helping us in terms of, you know, he's not, he's not doing this for profit for himself. He's doing it because he likes the two of us. He likes what we're doing. And you know what? The programs work for him. Um, and, you know, with, with that sort of marketing and, and the, the force that can have, where you look at the US market, yet again with fitness, is massive. 
and we want to break into that. You know, we've got the goal. We set the goal. We've got. We've, we need to. We still, still don't get me wrong. We're not there in the UK just yet. We've got a goal to. You know, there's there's lots of goals we still got to meet, and that that word goal keeps coming out of my mouth. But two years down the line, we want to be in the US and we want to launch this over there as well. Fantastic. I mean, and it's not expensive either, is it? No. Six ninety nine a month. Um, of course, I don't need it with my finely honed body, but you could be joining today. If you want details on that particular website, by the way, uh, just go to uh, myptplan.com. You'll find the links just below this video, both on our YouTube channel and also at Business Connections Live. Uh, you are watching Business Connections Live. It's lovely to have your company as always. By the way, if you are enjoying the show, inspirational tonight. We've still got one more business to talk about because that's one business and another business has developed from that. I suppose the question is, what, what makes it work? You know, was it, was it meeting that woman at the networking event that shows that networking works? Was it the fact that, you were, uh, that Josh was able to walk in and actually do a pitch to somebody out of the blue that wasn't expecting it? Was it the skills to do that? Was it just a sheer front to, uh, to be big enough? I mean, there is an expression about putting something on tables, but is, is it that that makes the difference when you're going there? Is it the, the innate enthusiasm that somebody has when they're presenting an idea to somebody else that sells, that sells them and moves it forward? Is it the fact that you've done it once and because you've done it once, you feel you can actually do it again and again, and each time you're doing it, you're refining what you've done the previous time. It could be any of those things, I suppose. We'll find out in just a moment. Listen, if you want to subscribe to the channel, there's the button. Press it just there. If you'd like to subscribe, that way you're going to get notification of each and every program that comes along from Business Connections Live. We'll send it straight to your mailbox. Maybe we should be sitting down, though, with envelopes and writing them out by hand and posting it to you to let you know. But if you want to be involved, if you want to be part of the Business Connections Live community, then simply fill that or just uh, subscribe to the channel. You can watch us on uh, iTunes as well. You can download all the programs there. You can listen to us and watch us on the train as you're heading in towards maybe the office in the morning with inspirational stories like this one this evening. Uh, you can also see us on Roku as well. And hello to all our Roku audience. That's fantastic to know that so many of you are out there. And of course, right across the internet, we're all over the different places, uh, different uh, web and video delivery services were out there. If you want to be part of the show, then if you're an expert and you feel you've got something that you can share with our community, then please do let us know. Here's an email address that you can contact us on. The email address is studio at business connection, well done, business connections live, uh, dot com. If you want, you can always contact us by the telephone. Here's the number. It is 01784256. He wasn't expecting any of this, 777. I'll be beaten over the head for this uh, later on. Just get in contact with us. Have a word with either Linda or myself. Uh, Josh. I was going to play um, the the trailer there. We're not, we don't want to waste any more time. Let's get let's get back to you. Let's get back to you. So okay. So my PT plan mm -hmm. taken off, really working. Yeah. Actually achieving. Mm -hmm. What was it, by the way? Is it because you've done it once now that you feel you can do it again and again and again? I feel you get a hunger to be successful. Um, and as, as a business owner, um, you've got to earn yourself a living. And the fact was, you know, it's great. You know, I've had the success of being able to say, I've, I've, I've sold the distribution rights for a business. But what, what, was, what was my next plan? You know, what, so say my PT plan uh, across the next couple of years is really successful and we're in the same position again to sell the business. Then what do I do? You know, there's How do you feel about it if you do get to the stage where you can sell this one? Are, are I, th you, I think. I think. Would I think, you be more passionate about this one because it's yours from scratch? A hundred. I think a hundred percent. I mean, the, the, my PT plan business model has taken. You know, it, okay, we've been set up a year in terms of company status, but you know, actually building the website and I'll I'll, I'll, exp I'll explain a short story about you know how we started the business. Um, you know, you said before about funding. Um, we started the business. We tried to do it on on a shoestring budget. And we really struggled because the fact was we, we had to do marketing, we had to build a website, we had to do all this stuff to promote new business. And, you know, we, we, we I'm not going to lie to you, we, we went to a first web developer and the web, web developers are fantastic things, um, but you've got to have the right one. And, you know, there was, there was lots of stuff where there was implications involved and our, our website was a hun wasn't 100% round the first time. And we built on that 
Um, we've gone to a successful web development agency where, we, where we're helping build the business and you know but even now we're still moving forward on using you know it's about maintaining what you're doing and as I said to you before revitalizing your business constantly especially what we're doing um, the fitness the fitness industry is massive uh, there's so much there's so many people out there competing uh, I'm sure we're going to go on to the, the, my supplement business next but you know that, that, that more that, than likely know, exactly <laughs> and you know in terms of in, ter in terms of that you know that's a competitive market but my PT plant is a niche market um, and one fantastic thing I want to mention is it, uh, about advertising is Facebook ads. Niche markets across uh, Facebook advertising, I mean, for you and your business or any business can be fantastic. Uh, and if you're watching tonight, you know, you've, you've got a business, you might want to progress to the next level, but you're sitting there thinking to yourself, how do I do this? Well, where do I get the drive from? You're looking around every day, you think to yourself, I'm sitting here doing emails or I'm sitting there ringing people, I'm not getting anywhere. First of all, what my advice to you would be look at yourself and look at your business query that them the things that other people look at you and think query yourself and think right have i got every single bit of this business ticked is, is it is it watertight before i can go out there selling it and that's what i've learned from my pt plan you know you've got to consolidate a business before you can start going to market and start saying we could do this we can do that because you soon get found out and your service will soon get you know um the, the soon problems where people encounter and then you're tripping over yourself. You're running before you can walk. Look at your business, look at yourself, and make yourself watertight, make your business watertight, and then go to market. You know, people sit there, and I, you know, I have it with full networking. People ask me, there's lots of businesses in our room. Uh, lots of them are, you know, um, some of them might be one man bands, some, might, some of them might be multi million pound companies with offices up and down the UK. And it, it came to me in June, and I sat, it was, you know, it, it was a memorable meeting um, because a woman came up to me and said, look, how the hell do you do what you do? And I said, and I just explained, look, I've got passion and determination. Oh, I can tell. How can I be like you? And I was like, uh, and I just explained, you know, it, you, be you, passionate, be passionate and, and, yeah. and be determined. And this lady was a cake seller. And she said to me, I bake X amount a week. How can I make more? And I was, I was really blunt. And I said, how about making more cakes? And, oh, I haven't thought about that. And it's the simple thing. So that's a perfect example of it might be such a simple thing to do. But look at, <laughs> if, you look, if, you're, if you're reaching maximum capacity, how can you expand? Is it outsourcing? Is it doing other things? Look at, look at your business and look how you can expand as well. And, you know, make sure every area of your business is being covered. And that's the biggest advice I can give to anyone. All right. Now. My PT plan, we're running out of time. We're, okay. we're going to go slightly over, I would imagine, but not, not by too far. Uh, let's just look at what's grown out of my BT, PT plan. Yeah. I keep wanting to say BT, I don't know why, but, but yeah. Um, now, yes, this one. Yeah. Evo, Evo Nutrition um, is, is grown out of my PT plan, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we are selling supplementation uh, products. Um, we have a client base of my PT plan. What we, the, the reason this came about was my PT plan was offering um, discounts to premium brands in the market. And, you know, they're well-known brands, but because we were on an affiliate scheme. So we could offer customers 20% off, you know, this, that, this, that. And it was great, but we received 10p in order. And we were like, we want to make money out of this. You know, business is about cross-selling and making money. Mm -hmm. um, we saw this as a perfect approach to us being able to have our own products and cross-selling through my PT plan. Um, you know, and, and to be perfectly honest, you know, we work we worked on Evo Nutrition. It was we went to a fitness expo in, in October of 2014, and that's how recent the idea was. And we launched it on the on you know pretty much in the first week of January. And from there, we've 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 done quite well. The sales are coming in. Um, we we done um, magazine art uh, magazine loose insert. Um, across the Christmas period and we've seen orders coming up and down the UK and as you said before uh, how can you market I mean that's that's now what I'm asking myself for evolution uh, nutrition to be able to market this and that's why I said to you before about Facebook Facebook's been massive for the, across the last couple of weeks for us and Evo nutrition to get out to a mass market but niche um, you can select your people you want to target and it's really helped our business grow uh, at such you know 
we're, we're, it's still a baby and it's about nurturing that baby to becoming a, you know a toddler into into a, into a child into young adolescence and that's what we've got to do now with my PT plan and the Evo nutrition my PT plans probably at the stage of like a two-year-old baby might have been you know it's at the stage of it, it still needs care still needs nurturing still needs support um, and to help the both businesses grow and they'll coincide with each other and that's that's what we aim to do and grow the two businesses together successfully very briefly what do you reckon is next what do I reckon is next? Rosies and sell them. I think for me, um, people ask me a day to be, oh, what's, what's, what's next in the Piers Empire? People ask me, you know, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, renowned, I'm renowned across my, my groups in four networking for the Piers Empire. Um, <laughs> but you know what? It's, it's one of them where I want to consolidate what I've got. I want to, I, I want to tell people, fantastic, look, I'm not sitting here today as a multimillionaire owning, you know, big companies. Look, I've set up companies. I, I'm a modest guy. And I sit here today and I say to you, look, we've got, the two companies we started, but I want to consolidate them. And not many people will actually believe me saying this. I really want to work at the companies for a good couple of years to get into that standard of being able to sell them. And you know what? Uh, I set myself a target last year, um, and it might make off your laugh, but 50 years old, that's it for me. I don't want to do any more, but I've got to get there, and I've got to put, put, uh, maintain what I I'm doing. I thought you were you know? going to say... 23. No, that's it. Not, that, not, not that ambitious, <laughs> but you know... Um, I must, you know, the one thing I must say to people is I'm probably one of the most down to earth people you can actually meet and business is a massive part of my life but it isn't everything, you know, you've got to, you've got to be hungry, passionate and successful to be able to do stuff but you've got to be a person as well and you can't lose that. I must admit, I, f I, find, you, uh, I find you absolutely inspirational, I think it's Thank been you. a real, a real insight into where you started, how you got to where you are. It shows that do things right, things can lead on to other things. The way that you're, you're I, I, I mean, not, not blowing smoke anywhere, but the way you've started these businesses and the way that you're developing these businesses, very, very interesting. Thank you. And just some of the lessons that you've learned. Absolutely fascinating evening. Um, before you go, I'd like you to look down camera one, say who you are, the name of the business. But then what I'd like you to do is, this is the, the two minute, the three minute motivational talk that is the takeaways, the, the things that people can learn from your experiences and what they can maybe put into their business to really generate a little bit of extra income, to, to give them maybe a little bit more success or at least give them a bit of a steer to do that. Can you do that for them? Yeah, 100%. Okay then, okay, you've been watching uh, Joss Piers on my PT plan here on Business Connections Live, uh, talking about where he started, how he made that choice between an entrepreneurial route and also university, how he stepped back from that, how he found himself going to networking uh, meetings, a simple conversation that then turned into the opportunity to make a pitch and then making that pitch become a reality and making it a successful pitch. And from that, a business grew. And then managing a business as it grows and then understanding that as that business grows what you've got to do then is to understand at what point you maybe walk away from it or you sell it or you have an exit plan and then what do you do well you do it all over again I mean I don't know about you but you know if someone had been sitting here and they were 40 50 years old you'd be going yeah I can see that but when you've got somebody sitting here who is 20 you start thinking to yourself, don't you? Has time passed you by? It's never, ever too late. The only person it's too late for is my director this evening. But that's neither here nor there. Listen, Josh, straight down camera number one, if you can say who you are and the name of the business and those takeaways that are going to be really useful for small to medium scale enterprises. Brilliant. Well, it's Josh Pierce, uh, Company Director of Evo Nutrition and My PT Plan. Um, look, guys, I had a decision when I was 18 years old. Do I go to university or do I become self-employed? Do I run that risk? Do I not have the backup plan of education? And I worked towards a goal. I worked towards a target. I had plans in place to be able to make myself what I am and where I am today. It's all about you. It's all about yourself. There's no magical formula. There's no magic book you can read. Look, there's people around you. There's people who can help you. But it's all down to you and it's down to the personality you've got. Um, I've had massive support from family, friends and business mentors along the way and that's really helped me. 
But the one thing I want to leave you with tonight is the fact that look at yourself and just say to yourself, you can do it. There's been many a time across the last three years I've thought to myself, I can't do this anymore. And I put my head in my hands on, on, on a couple of occasions on days where it's been really bad. And I've just said to myself, do you know what? I can do it. And it's been through the help of people in the four networking uh, arena, uh, which I'm a massive admirer of. And it's been, down to, it's been down to a community of people. And that, I think that's really important for you. One piece of advice I must say is get yourself into that peace of mind where you have people around you to comfort, support you, and make business a pleasure as well. Because everything I do, I love doing. Uh, I wake up on a Monday morning and you know what? I don't think to myself, I don't want to be in work today. I don't not want to have that you know, nine to five job I said to Steve before, look, I, t I, t I was in the fortunate position after working quite hard to be able to take off for three months last summer and that was down to me being self-employed and that was because I had planning and preparation previously done and sat down and I set targets myself. I met them targets and I was able to do it. I've set three businesses up and I've successfully sold one and I've got two more um, in order to be going, going forward and I really want to leave you with one thing. You can do it. Believe in yourself. I believed in myself and look where I am today. And not many people did believe in me when I was younger on, apart from my family and apart from mum and dad who have really always been there for me. But, you know, I went, to, I went to a grammar school. I was told I had to go to university. I refused a place doing business and law at one of the top universities in this country. And I was able to stand there and say to myself now, I've done it on my own back and I've set businesses up. It's not been an easy journey. And the thing is, I've learned many things along the way. And thanks to Steve for having me tonight. It's, it's been, 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 been absolutely, great. it's been inspirational. It has been truly fantastic. Thank I wish you. you all the very best. Thanks, Steve. Um, I've really enjoyed it, actually. And I, I think, you know, the whole idea of this programme is, is not to promote individual businesses. It's about the whole area of learning no, and to right. inspire and to get people in the right frame of mind. I think your story tonight has been definitely doing that. Listen, thank, thank you, you Josh. Been a pleasure. Thank in. you very much. It's been fantastic. Uh, next week's show, our guest can be Rafi Akbar, founder and CEO. CEO of Lucky Web. Uh, his background's in digital marketing, web design, social media, e-commerce, and also SEO. He's going to be coming in. We're going to be talking about how to get your first uh, WordPress site up, maybe for your business. If you've never done it before, or you, you feel you don't have a web, or you feel you don't need one, maybe next week we can uh, change your mind on the program. Rafi Akbar in. And then uh, a cracking show the week after that as well. Uh, it's all coming along at the moment. Dan Spicer on the 11th of February. Uh, he's our guest and he's from Hootsuite. So if you're into social media and you want to find out how to use Hootsuite to its maximum capacity, it's a great way of managing your social media. It's all about conversations, but with Hootsuite, it makes it a little easier. Dan Spicer on the 11th of February is going to be joining us here. And um, we've talked, we've mentioned his name a few times tonight, Brad Burton. He's going to be coming live from the studio on the 18th of February at midday uh, with the first of four networking TV. And we are looking forward to that. We're working very closely with Brad and the four networking team to get that show all ready for broadcast. And it's going to be a really interesting show. Not an hour long, only half an hour long, he reckons. I reckon it'll be longer than that. Uh, because I just do. Uh, but he's, that's going to be taking place on the 18th of Feb. And don't forget the business show at Excel on the 13th or 14th. I tell you what, shall we run end credits? Because that's your lot for tonight. Uh, we'll do it all again next Wednesday uh, with Rafi. Till then, have yourself a fantastic week, successful in business. And Josh Pierce, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thanks, Steve. Till we do it next week at six. Have a great week. Bye for now. Bye-bye.